So there's nothing that the states can do, but we can try to impose on him his job, which is to follow the Constitution and to implement federal law. So that's what we've been trying to do. That's why we've sued him on several different occasions already, and we just sued him again on another immigration issue where he's decided to issue this memorandum in his, in his agencies that says that if uh, people are criminals, they don't have to be deported. And so we are going to try to push him towards following what federal law says he has to do. Now, today marks Vice President Harris's 12th day as the border crisis manager, bang up job she's doing. She still hasn't visited the border, though. Uh, she has no immediate plans to do so. Does this show the level of concern this administration has for the three crises these, these, they've started at the border? Yeah, the fact that she, she doesn't show up, the president doesn't show up to the border to see what's actually happening, to talk to border agents who are on the ground, to talk to customs and immigration officials who are on the ground, to talk to law enforcement who are on the ground, and to find out what's going on in these detention centers, to see how close these children are to each other, that some of them have COVID and they're spreading it among each other, and then they're bringing it into the country, to not see any of that. And then to keep the media out of there tells you a lot about their policies. They're not, they're not proud of the results, even though personally it seems like they are, but they don't want the public to know what the results are because they know the public would be outraged. Well, thank God people like you, and actually you were the one, actually the first one to file a lawsuit. You're suing the Biden administration because they deserve it after he came into office. You're also leading other states suing Biden's job-killing move to kill the Keystone XL pipeline. How is that case proceeding? So we filed that in federal court in Texas. Uh, we think we've got a really good chance of winning. This was something that Congress set up, the Keystone Pipeline. They authorized it. They said that President Obama had a certain period of time to, to, to speak out and, and explain why it shouldn't be implemented. He did not do that. So Trump ends up implementing it. And Biden, we think, in violation of state or federal law and then the Constitution, stopped it. And so we think we have a really good argument. I mean, this goes beyond the policy arguments of, of energy independence and foreign governments uh, supplying our, that we don't, that are not friendly to us supplying our fuel. The environmental issues of now having to transport this by train instead of by uh, pipeline, the jobs that were lost, none of that is even what we're talking about. We're just talking about federal law and Biden's constitutional role in, in, in implementing federal law. Yeah, let me focus in on the law because these kinds of stories I'm about to talk with you about, one that I know you're very familiar with, is what drives we conservatives absolutely crazy. In Texas, a judge ruled that local laws can override state laws. This pertains to mask mandates being imposed by Travis County that, that they run counter to the governor's executive order. Now, you and I know federal law trumps state law, trumps you know uh, county and city laws. That's the way it used to work in old America. But now you've got judges who are saying, oh yeah, screw the supremacy clause. It no longer applies here. So let me ask you, what compels any citizen out there, if judges aren't going to follow the law, what compels any citizen to follow the law or the rules? Well, it's pretty important that the rule of law is followed by these judges, because you're right, then people become suspect of any laws that are not being followed, and then they say, why should I follow the laws? That's sort of the, I think, the culture that Obama put in place when he was in office is like, look, I'm not going to follow my constitutional role. And so it sent the message to these local cities uh, local county officials and and some states that decided, hey, that's a good policy for us. We just won't we won't follow the law, and we'll make people sue us to enforce anything that we're supposed to be doing. And I think that clearly, Austin is one of those places, one of those cities. We've had to sue many times. We've been successful many times in beating them in court, and we will be successful again on this mass mandate because they have no authority to do this outside of what the governor authorizes. Yeah, no kidding. I, I just, I don't understand how a judge says, hey, that whole supremacy clause that we've based our entire system of governance on, uh, that no longer applies. And how, uh, by the way, how do they get away with doing that? And you say you're confident you're going to win this case in the end. Because we'll appeal it. I mean, we have local courts here that are pretty liberal and pretty sympathetic to Austin. They're, these judges live in Austin and they're in the same party as some of the leaders. And, and they, they allow uh, transgressions and violations of the law, which is unfortunate. And we have to appeal all the time from many courts in Austin up to the Texas Supreme Court or the Fifth Circuit, depending on whether we're in federal or state court. And it's disappointing because the law seems to be irrelevant to some of these judges. But that's why, you know, what Trump did was so important in office. He appointed a lot of judges that actually care about following their, their constitutional role. Yeah, last thing, Major League Baseball has moved the All-Star game to Colorado to protest common-sense voter ID laws 
in Georgia. However, Colorado requires, guess what? Voter ID. Now, if Texas passes its voter integrity law, which it's already passed the Senate, it's conceivable that Major League Baseball could launch an economic attack on Texas as well, just like they did on Georgia. Could Texas and other states look at these carve-outs, these special laws designed to help sports leagues to maybe retaliate against, uh, against an attack by Major League Baseball on the state of Texas? Is there something that can be done in that arena? Sure, the legislature can look at any special incentives that they provide to Major League Baseball or any other sporting event that decides they want to punish Texas for having election integrity laws. Uh, it's pretty insane that Colorado does have a voter ID law and Georgia's trying to put something <laughs> similar in place and they're being punished for it. It's kind of uh, hypocritical, but I guess not surprising in, in today's world. Yeah, the woke cancel culture makes no sense, Attorney General Paxton. Always appreciate the time here on the Chris Salcedo Show. We'll talk again. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.